Car dependency is detrimental to a city's growth and development. It encourages endless sprawl and road building that is simply unsustainable in a finite world. As such, many North American cities have been trying to fix the mistakes of the past either through investments in the public and active transits or by encouraging great field development in the city's sprawling shopping malls and parking lots. Eliminating parking minimum has been suggested by many urbanists as a possible tool to quickly and effortlessly eliminate car dependency. The logic behind zero parking bylaw is simple. If new residential buildings don't have parking spaces, people will be forced to use other modes of transportation. And just like that, car dependency is no more. So, if eliminating car dependency is so simple, why aren't cities everywhere doing it? Like many things in life, a parking minimum is a topic filled with nuances. To understand why urbanists want to remove it, we first need to talk about why it exists in the first place. In essence, parking minimum is the minimum amount of parking spaces a building needs to have to meet the bylaw requirements. Such regulation exists to ensure that everybody has at least one mode of transportation available to them. They can be considered as the epitome of car-dependent urban planning as it forces every household and retail space to allocate precious land for parking. They force people to use cars as their main modes of transportation, thereby compounding car dependency. It is obvious to see why some would want such a regulation to be completely removed. Just take a look at your closest shopping mall or Costco, and you can see just how much land is dedicated to parking alone. Without such regulation, planners will be able to use urban land much more efficiently. It will also put a dent in the cycle of reduced demand. No parking spaces means people are less likely to drive to their destination, meaning they are more likely to use other modes of transportation for their trips, thereby reducing car usage on the road. Clearly, eliminating parking minimum has many upsides. So why aren't cities doing it? Well, for most of the times, Removing parking minimum is a horrible idea. While parking minimum encourages car usage, it also guarantees that everybody would have at least one mode of transportation. Removing parking minimum would mean removing the only means of transportation for many people, especially those living in a car-dependent environment. Imagine if you lived in a typical North American suburb. The closest shopping mall is a 15 minutes drive and your workspace is an hour drives away. And because your municipal government spent all the transportation budget on roads, there is no public transit. So, if you lived in a household with no parking, you would need to rely on taxi or Uber to go anywhere. Removing parking minimum would mean removing the only means of transportation for many people, especially those living in a car-dependent environment. Removing parking minimum alone will not solve the urban sprawl or car-dependent urban design in North American cities. But because of its many benefits, it remains a valuable tool for urban planners to combat car-dependent city plannings. So, when exactly should urban planners consider lower or even zero parking minimum? The problem with removing parking minimum is that it forces people to choose other modes of transportation by completely removing driving as a possible way of travel. Without providing alternative modes of transportation, removing parking minimum would be a disaster. However, in areas with convenient access to public transit and biking network, removing parking minimum would be a quick and easy way to drastically reduce the city's car dependency. It all depends on the transportation context in the area. One notable example in reducing parking minimum requirement is the city of Toronto. Thanks to the recent bylaw amendments, the City of Toronto is giving developers the permission to include very little parking spaces in new residential projects. In addition, they are also allowed to file for bylaw exemptions to further lower their parking spaces. However, these exemptions are only granted under certain conditions. Since removing parking at minimum requires other modes of transportation to fill the hole driving has left, the development that most often receive these kind of exemptions are located within walking distance of transit stations. But transit-oriented developments are not the only ones benefiting from the new bylaw exemptions. For new buildings located far away from transit stations, developers can opt for installing car sharing stations in their garages instead of providing parking spaces for each unit. 
As you can see, these new parking pilots are fairly flexible. And as long as developers provide a sensible alternative to car ownership for their site, they will most likely be approved. Removing parking minimum is a very controversial topic in transportation and planning. And on one hand, it serves as an efficient tool against car dependent infrastructure by directly discouraging car ownership. On the other hand, it completely removes driving as a possible mode of transport which will be detrimental for those living in a car dependent area. Removing parking minimum should be only considered when other modes of transportation are available. Otherwise, it is just a recipe for disaster. Hey folks, thanks for watching yet another video. Please consider to leave a like and subscribe. As always, this is the Transportation Channel, and I'll see you next time.